In this tutorial, I will be using Mudbox, which is Autodesk's digital sculpting tool, to create a terrain. Um, and I'm going to use some, some uh, stamps that have been pre-made. Uh, so I have Mudbox open here, and I want to begin a new sculpture using a plane, which is just a flat surface. When I click on that, I get a plane. Uh, my movement in uh, Mudbox is just like in Maya. I can Alt and left click to tumble or rotate around. I can Alt and middle click to pan around like this, and I can use the mouse wheel to zoom. Now, I'm going to press W so you can see the wireframe, and you'll notice that there are not a lot of polygons here. That, that if I sculpt at this resolution, at this polygon level, that it's going to not give me a lot of detail. And so unlike other sculpting programs that subdivide automatically as needed, Mudbox doesn't do that. So I have to hold down sh uh, Shift and press D. So Shift D will subdivide and increase the polygon count. And I can keep going up. Um, for my computer, which is not super great, um, I really don't want to go above level 6 or 7 or I start having major computer problems. But the higher I go on that, generally the um, nicer my image is going to look. So I'll press Shift D again. Where was I at? I don't even remember. Okay, so I'll go level 7. Um, and now I am ready to use some stamps. Now the stamps I'm going to be using, and I'll include a link of this, um, is from Amir Abdawi. And he has created some um, vector displacement map stamps using World Machine, and they are awesome. So he, uh, I'll include a link to his YouTube video, and he has a uh, link to his Dropbox that has those stamps. And I downloaded those stamps. It's a zip file, and I've opened th those files so you can see them right here. That they are actually uh, image files, and they're 3D data that have been basically baked down onto a plane. Um, they're very helpful. So the way that I can bring those in as stamps into Mudbox is if I'm in my stamp selection, there is this arrow here, and I can hit that um, arrow with the circle and say add stamp. And then I can go and select all these files. I can hold down shift and select all of them and open them. And now they will appear in your stamp list. And they look like these. They're at the end of my list. They're bluish. And what I'm going to be using is the imprint tool. So imprint allows me to basically drag the stamp, and it will create um, what uh, deform it based off of the stamp. Um, the larger my strength is, the more it'll affect it. And each of these stamps has kind of a different strength level. So if I set this to, I'm going to set the strength down. Um, I can change the size. Oh, I guess I don't really have a brush size with the imprint tool. It's just clicking and dragging. So. That's it at 7. You can barely see it at all. Let me turn off the wireframe here again by pressing W. And if I set the strength to 100, now I have a bigger thing. Now, yours may look like this when you start with these edges. And the reason for that is something called fall off. So if I scroll down on this imprint tool down to the bottom, you'll see that there's a fall off setting. And this is basically um, how it deals with the strength of the brush um, over the distance of the brush. And the default one is this square. And you'll notice that there is a tab here that says fall off. And a square just means that it's the same strength all the way. So it goes all the way to the end of the brush, and then it just ends. But if I do the same thing, and I choose this brush here, or this fall off, what it does here, and you can see this almost, you can treat this like the center of the brush. The strongest part of the brush will be at the center, and then it's going to weaken and weaken and weaken until it reaches the end, and then it'll just move out smoothly to the base. And I can even lay more of these on top of each other and create some pretty interesting designs. And I've got a bunch of different stamps here. Holding down um, control will send it the opposite direction. So in this one, it's a valley, this stamp. But if I hold down control when I drag it, it's the other way. And I can always come back up here and change the strength to be less so that it's not affected as much, uh, it's not affecting the environment. If I use a fall off, let me go back to this brush here. Now I'm going to turn it up a lot. Um, depending on which fall off I use, so with this one, for example, I create really strong peaks because um, the strongest part of the brush is here and then it very quickly falls off. But I can even drag this and change it a little bit. So if I want um, a peak that falls off very quickly but doesn't start as tall, 
I can do that by just changing the fall off. Or you can just use any of these preset ones. Most of them are set up to, to look good um, with, with these tools. And so I can very quickly now, just using these different mountains and dragging and using different um, strengths, and different sizes, create a pretty cool looking environment. I've noticed when I reach, if you're clicking on the plane and you're at the edge and you drag, it only lets you drag to the edge of the plane. If you're off of the plane and you drag, then you can make it as big as you want. So I can just add some roughness and texture to what I've been working with here. Now I have a pretty cool environment that was made really quickly um, using these awesome brushes. Um, while I'm in Mudbox, I can also do painting um, right onto this environment. So if I come here to Paint Tools, and I choose one of these and I click on the environment, I'm creating a TIFF image file on uh, that's laid over the top of this just like any other texture. And so that file will be saved separately when I export this to Maya. Um, I've just increased the resolution one. It starts at 2048, I'm changing it to 4096. Everything else I'm keeping the same, and when I click OK, now I can paint. So I have a paint brush, and that brush will paint whatever color is here. Um, there's this airbrush, which is, um, whoops. I notice with the airbrush, if I don't turn off use stamp image, it brings it in as black. But the airbrush gives me a lot more control over this. I probably want to choose a different color. When I click on this color box, I get my color chooser, so I can choose different colors. I can increase or decrease the strength and the size. Uh, the fast way with the brush to change the size is just like in Photoshop, it's the brackets next to the P, the left bracket on your keyboard uh, will make it smaller, the right bracket will make it bigger. Um, it's also pretty fast just to come here and adjust the strength through that. But I can paint right onto my environment here. the colors that I'm looking for and try to mix up the colors and get a variety of and then um, once I've gotten this I can bring it into uh, I can bring it into Maya very easily and use it with the existing things um, which I will show in another tutorial video. So that's that. Um, when you're done, um, to save this for future use, when you do save scene as, it's going to save it as a .mud file. Um, and you'll just want to make sure that you hold on to that. And that's how to use those terrain brushes in Mudbox.